Hi everyone. Uh, the title of my presentation is Parenting and LCHF, but before I touch on that, um, I should tell you about uh, how I came to be here in the first place. Uh, this is my third um, low carb uh, seminar. Um, the first one was in 2012, and that's where it all sort of started for me. Uh, I went to the uh, Melbourne 2012 seminar as someone um, not interested in low carb nutrition, uh, but for as my job. Um, I work as a video cameraman and um, Joe Fitton, who many of you will know, um, recommended me to Rod uh, as someone who could come along for the day and shoot the presentations and edit them and put them on YouTube. Um, I'd never had any health issues or weight problems and I think I can safely be described as insulin sensitive. Um, so I came to the 2012 seminar as an interested but uh, pretty sceptical observer uh, with no understanding of what low carb nutrition was uh, other than it had helped Joe immensely and um, it was something similar to the Atkins diet. Uh, I was pretty taken aback initially by the passion and excitement of some of the people I saw in 2012 um, and I began to form an opinion that it was a bit of a cult. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I sat through the filming of the 15 or so presentations on that day and none of them really resonated with me except for uh, Professor Sakaris' uh, talk on um, sugar and fat metabolism uh, and that really made me stand up and take notice that uh, there was some science behind this. But again it didn't seem to apply to me directly so I um, uh, went home and didn't think much more about it. Um, after the editing of the videos was finished I went on my way and didn't think about low carb again other than to happily watch uh, my YouTube numbers go up 25,000 from all the people that flocked to see uh, Jimmy's videos. So thanks Jimmy, there we are. <laughs> um, jump forward from there to July 2013 and uh, everything pretty much changed for me and my wife Tanya uh, when our two year old son was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Uh, this is a photo of him on his second birthday when we started uh, noticing something was wrong. Um, Truman was our first child and by the time he was diagnosed his little sister Millie was um, three months old. Um, after Millie arrived home from hospital Truman started to drink copious amounts of water and he had begun randomly throwing up his food. Um, we thought that it might be diabetes and we mentioned it uh, to our midwife but she told us not to worry because if he had diabetes he'd be much sicker. Uh, so following her advice we watched him sort of mysteriously start to lose weight and we chalked up his uh, erratic behaviour, his tantrums and all the water drinking as an attention seeking reaction to his little sister coming over. Um, I now know that it, it was his kidneys desperately trying to flush all the sugar from his system but um, back then we had no idea about these things and I was getting sick, of tired, of, sick and tired of getting up uh, ten times a night to give him water. Um, we were getting more and more sleep deprived and I eventually decided uh, enough was enough and tried to wean him off his water addiction by only giving him um, small sips through the night. Um, after uh, another sleepless night and being shocked to see him at 3am looking half starved and shiv shivering and begging me for water, I knew something was wrong. Um, so we took him to the doctor and his uh, blood sugars were uh, so high that er an error message came up on the glucometer. and. Uh, he and I spent the next uh, five nights in hospital. There he's looking uh, pretty sick. He was a pretty sick little boy and um, we felt pretty helpless at the time. This is uh, him the day after, starting to feel a bit better, eating some carbs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> after leaving hospital, uh, Tanya and I didn't know what the hell we were doing. We'd, we'd had a crash course in diabetes management at the hospital and um, we didn't know anyone who had diabetes and we didn't uh, know what we were doing. So uh, one of our first questions to the dietitians was uh, does that mean he can't have any sugar? And we were surprised to hear from the dietitian that he could and should continue to eat his normal diet. And um, all we had to do was count his carbs and then try and guess uh, how much insulin to give him to compensate. On top of that we had to try to guess how much exercise he was going to do and then guess how much growing he was going to do. Um, we had always eaten pretty well in our house. Uh, Tanya is a, a big foodie and we were already eating loads of organic uh, fruit and vegetables and free range meats. 
Um, we didn't eat very many junk meals, and in fact, the dietitian at, or the dietitians at the hospital said they were very happy with our meal plans and um, advised us not to change anything. So we stayed with what we were doing, and um, we jumped on the relentless roller coaster of uh, diabetes, blood sugars, highs and lows. And a growing two-year-old uh, and type 1 diabetes is not a very good combination, and uh, trying to treat it conventionally felt ridiculous and very frustrating. Uh, his levels were constantly all over the place despite our best efforts and um, eating a diet high in carbs when his body couldn't process them properly anymore just did not work. Um, we probably would have continued on like that following the standard dietary advice and getting more and more depressed about his long-term pros health prospects if it wasn't for two things. Um, one was uh, seeing uh, Troy Stapleton's presentation on LCHF for diabetes management at uh, the December 2013 seminar. Um, we were constantly looking for answers at the time in trying to balance um, Chewy's blood sugars and we were only getting more questions. It was like trying to do a, dry, a jigsaw without uh, all the pieces. Uh, seeing Troy's presentation um, on limiting your carbs to limit your need for insulin was brilliant. Um, it gave us an alternative to seriously consider and seeing it has probably saved my son a lifetime of health complications. Um, I just want to publicly say thank you to Troy. Um, he's helped us a lot and I'm sure he's helped many other people. Uh, the se second thing that happened to our family, uh, to make our family commit to an LCHF lifestyle was uh, Truman being diagnosed with celiac disease in June this year. That's him, uh, that seemed just after his gastroscopy to confirm his celiac diagnosis. Uh, for a month, month or so, we experimented with some of the um, gluten-free processed alternatives on the market, but um, they spiked his blood sugars pretty high and they didn't last very long in the house. So, uh, so we, as a family, had come to a bit of a crossroads. Uh, on the one side, we had the hospital staff and our endocrinologist um, giving us the standard dietary advice, uh, which wasn't working. And on the other hand, we had Troy Stapleton um, telling everybody about his success with um, low-carb, high-fat diets for treating diabetes. Um, Truman's celiac di diagnosis had meant that anything with gluten was off the menu now, which coincidentally meant a large amount of carb options were off the menu anyway. Uh, so what were we going to do? Um, we took a leap and decided to ignore our dietitians and endocrinologists and our families and um, committed to an LCHF change about three months ago. Um, we started by going through the pantry. We, pantry and we threw out about half of it. We stopped buying potatoes, uh, stopped using rice bran oil and started using butter and coconut oil, um, threw out our toaster completely and started uh, spending up big on meat at the local farmers market. Uh, in the last few months I'd love to say the change in Truman's blood sugars has been astounding um, and that he stopped having hypos completely but that's not the case. Um, he is still having the occasional hypo, um, maybe once or twice a week, and um, we are still getting, I was still having trouble getting his blood sugars under control um, overnight. But um, overall, his blood sugar levels are much more stable, and uh, throughout the day, and the, uh, the more we learn about uh, LCHF, uh, the easier it's getting. Um, Steve Finney's talk in August uh, about um, uh, protein also being converted into sugars if you've got too much uh, has helped a bit. Um, when he does have a high pain now, uh, we can generally trace it back to a specific reason. Um, this helps us to prevent, prevent them in the future, where previously it had seemed impossible to predict. And um, we've now also halved the amount of insulin that we were giving him, and he's taking very little of the fast-acting insulin, which is uh, designed to bring your blood sugars down quickly. Uh, physically, he's doing well, with no sign of any decreased energy levels um, or any abnormal behaviour. Uh, he remains in the 97th percentile for growth and uh, apart from uh, never-ending worries about his blood sugar levels, he is normal and a much happier three-year-old. That's, um, that's him tucking into his third strawberry last week. Yeah. Uh, so what conclusions can I offer after selfishly experimenting with my child's health and forcing my family to adopt this wacky fad diet? <laughs> I can give you two. Um, firstly, I have no medical training, but I know now that um, eating fat does not make you fat. Our family has been eating a hell of a lot of fat in the last few months in the form of uh, nuts, avocados, butter, and meat, and both Tanya and I have lost weight. Um, 
I personally feel fitter and mentally sharper since limiting my carbs, and I've lost about seven kilos without any extra exercise. Um, secondly, I know that the recommendations for the dietary treatment of type 1 diabetes are ridiculous and they need to be changed. Um, pe people with diabetes. People with diabetes should not eat the same diet as people who are insulin sensitive if they want to maintain their health long term. Thank you.